Okay, hello there, and thank you all so much for joining us. My name is Rebecca Russell. I'm a patient education specialist with PMD Healthcare, and today we'll be talking about the latest trends in spirometry. Um, first, just make sure that your volume is turned to a comfortable level. Don't worry about any background noise because we have everybody on mute. And if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and enter them in the Q&A box. We have our Q&A experts, Nancy and Carrie Ann, standing by to answer any questions that you may have. Um, you'll see their name, actually, in the little Q&A box, and below that you'll just see your name. And you won't see anybody else's name, that's for your privacy. So spirometry is the most common test that's performed for people who are affected by lung disease. There have been some new advancements, which we'll talk about today, and hopefully that will make testing a little bit easier for you. First, here are some shocking statistics. Did you know that asthma accounts for approximately 500,000 hospitalizations each year? And COPD is now the third leading cause of death. It's killed more women than breast cancer, Alzheimer's, and diabetes. In the past, most people who have cystic fibrosis, they died in their childhood. But with improved screening and treatments, they're now living well into their 30s, 40s, and even beyond. So if you or a loved one have been diagnosed with a lung condition, you've most likely sat down with your doctor, gone over your symptoms, how you're feeling, discussed your medical history, maybe you've had a chest x-ray, and most likely an initial spirometry test. But now, regular spirometry tests are required to monitor and work to control your symptoms. So there's lots of really great information out there that can be helpful. You can certainly work with your physician's office to gather this information, or you can work with a patient advocacy group. Um, some advocacy groups, such as the AANMA, the CF Roundtable, the COPD Foundation, these are all really great places to ask for some advice, get some support, and certainly have a lot of fun. So why spirometry? Why is it important to continue to measure your lung function? Well, it's telling the doctor how much capacity you have and if there's any lung restrictions or airway obstruction. So the basics. A spirometer is a device that measures your current lung function. Simply stated, it's taking a look at how well your lungs are working. In the past, you were only able to perform a spirometry test if you went to your doctor's office. But now, with the advancements which we'll talk about, you can now monitor your lung function anytime and anywhere. When monitoring your lung function, we're looking for a couple different measurements. We're looking for lung capacity, airflow volume, and also airflow speed. Just one of these measurements by itself will give us a little bit of information as to what's going on inside your airways, but combined with all of those measurements, we're getting a much clearer picture as to exactly what's going on taking place. Something else that's very important that we're looking for is your percent predicted. Percent predicted is your spirometry test results compared to other healthy people who are the same age, gender, height, and ethnicity as you. This percentage determines the severity of your lung condition. So we'll talk about a couple key terms. Now you'll notice in these key terms that the word force is used quite often. And the reason for that is because if you've ever had a spirometry test, you know that they tell you to take a great deep breath in and then to blow out as forcefully and completely as you possibly can to make sure you expel all of the air from your lungs. So you'll see with these measurements, FBC stands for forced vital capacity. It's the total amount of air that you can exhale as forcefully and completely as possible after you take that deep breath. FEV1 stands for forced expiratory volume in the first second. So it's measuring the total amount of air that you can forcefully blow out in just that first second of your breath. The FEV1 slash FVC ratio, well, it's comparing the total amount of air that you can blow out with the amount of air that you've blown out in just that first second. And then PEF, peak expiratory flow, it's no longer looking at the volume or the amount, it's looking at the speed. So PEF is the fastest flow rate reached at any time during your breath. Now you may have an understanding as to what the def definitions are, but let's talk about what this actually means to you. So how does this correlate to what's going on actually inside your body, inside your lungs and those airways? Take a look at this picture here of the normal airway. 
you can see that it's nice and clear, it's open, air can flow freely in and out, no problem. Now, in this damaged airway, there's this hypersecretion and buildup of the sticky mucus. There's also swelling and inflammation that's taking place in the lining of the airways, and then the muscles in the airways are becoming very tight and constricted. So all three of these things make it very difficult to air, for air to flow freely in and out of these airways. So when we talk about SBC, and remember that's the total amount of air that you can breathe out or expel from your lungs, if you have a lower FBC, it may indicate less lung capacity than a normal healthy level. An FEV1, which is the total amount blown out in just that first second, a lower measurement may indicate an obstruction of your airways that keeps the air from leaving your lungs. The ratio between the two may indicate lung restriction, airway obstruction, and a lower lung capacity. And then PEF, if you have a lower speed, a lower measurement, it may indicate that there's a partial narrowing taking place in your airways. So why don't we stop real fast and pull the audience? We're going to go ahead and ask everybody a question. Um, we'd like to know whether or not you're using a peak flow meter and if you use it on a regular basis. So you'll see a little gray box will pop up with the question. Do you have a peak flow meter and do you use it regularly? Go ahead and click your answer, A, B, C, or D. I'm going to click it as well. Hit Submit, and then X right out of that box. And give us a second or two to compile the answers, and we'll let you know what they are. Okay, so it looks like, yes, um, a few of you, or a couple of you, many of you are using a peak flow meter or know what it is, but maybe just aren't using it on a regular basis. Okay, so good. So at least you have an understanding as to what it is. So we'll talk about the difference between a peak flow meter and a spirometer. Now, peak flow meters are only going to give us a partial picture of the lung function. So they're going to measure the peak flow, which is that top speed, and then sometimes peak flow meters measure FEV1 as well. Some of them measure FEV1 too. But you see, they cannot calculate your percent predicted. And remember, that's your spirometry test results compared to other healthy people who are the same age, gender, height, and ethnicity as you, and it determines the severity of your condition. So it's very important. Peak flow meters are mechanical devices, and oftentimes they're just not accurate. That's why doctors mostly are using a spirometer instead of a peak flow meter. Now, a spirometer, on the other hand, gives us a much better overall picture of your lung functions by measuring the entire breath instead of just the breath in the first second. They're going to inform us of airway obstruction, lung restrictions, and a mixed situation. I think this diagram um, does a good job at helping you understand. So right here, this is the trachea or the large airway, and this is generally not affected by the obstruction and constriction. Within that first second of breath, this large airway, it empties. Now here, in these small little tiny airways, is where the most significant effects of obstruction and restriction are seen. So after that first second, the remainder of the breath is measuring these smaller little bronchial tubes and airways. And because this large airway is generally not as affected, the PEF and even the FEV1, they may appear normal. So you can see you're just really not getting a full picture with just the peak flow. So we'll talk about some of the latest trends and studies that have been performed. So at the John Hopkins Research Department, Dr. Noah Lexin and Natalie West conducted a study where they were looking at the benefits of using home spirometry. The study was six months long and it included 10 young adult patients. What they did is they gave the patients a spirometer. They said, take this home with you and then record your lung function two times a day, write down your measurements. <clears throat> They also asked them to write down their symptoms or how they were feeling. So the results, there were 28 exacerbations detected using the spirometer, whereas only eight exacerbations were detected with just the symptoms. Spirometry detected exacerbations on average of 16 days before patients began to feel symptoms. Another interesting finding in this study is when Dr. Lexon went back and he looked at the patient's utilization of medication before the study and also during the study, he found that patients used less medication during the course of the study, but also had improved or better lung function during the course of the study. 
This is thought to be because patients gained insight into their health through the use of home spirometry and were able to take the steps to maintain their lung health through better medication adherence. Another very interesting finding and study is there's this woman who has cystic fibrosis. She's in her 40s, she takes great care of herself, and she's always wanted to stay on top of the latest therapies and trends. So she participates in a couple different studies. Well, in one study, she was looking at using hypertonic saline. She used it for a few months, and she really didn't feel any different. She couldn't appreciate any changes in her lung function or the way she was feeling. So she just decided, okay, the treatment's not working for me. Well, during that same time period, she was taking place in a second study designed to evaluate the utility of home spirometry. So the study investigators collected the data, and what they found is that all of a sudden there was this dramatic improvement in her spirometry results. They went back, they looked, they correlated the data, and they found that it was the exact time period that she was using that hypertonic saline. So that was enough evidence and information right then and there for her to continue using that saline to this day. So because she wasn't able to feel a difference with the saline right away, without the spirometry, she would have never known that indeed it was actually affecting her lung function. It was working for her. So in this slide, what we're going to do is compare the difference between a home or personal spirometer like Spiro PD and compare that with an office spirometer. You can see that they're very similar in a lot of ways. So they both meet and exceed the American Thoracic Society standards, which means they're accurate. Um, they are both made with Swiss key components, so they're very well made. And they both uh, help out with communication between patients and physicians. So take a look where Spiro PD kind of separates itself and excels. So it's indicated for one person, and that's so that the settings are customized to the individual user. It also allows for personal trending, and it has a color-coded severity level, so you know the severity of your condition right at a glance. And then you can also view your medication history, and you can set alarms, which we can talk about. So Spiro PD is truly the world's first personal spirometer. It's a small, lightweight, portable device, and it empowers people with lung disease to monitor their lung function anytime and anywhere. So, you know, whether you're at home or work or school or wondering if you or your child should engage in a soccer game later on today, you can monitor your lung function and understand the severity of your condition right at a glance. It will also alert you of a decline in lung function before you begin to even feel symptoms. This helps you anticipate and prevent exacerbations and asthma attacks and ultimately reduces trips to the emergency room. It helps you track your trends, so it lets you, you and your doctor know if your treatment is working and the dosage is correct. So much like the woman that we just talked about in the study with cystic fibrosis, you'll be able to see if you're responding to your treatment. And then you can view your lung health trends in a simple graph. The color coding lets you know the severity of your condition at a glance. It also helps you remember. So it has a medication tracker that's built right into the device. You can set alarms to remind yourself when to take your medication, perform a breathing exercise, or to test your lung function. You can view your medication history to see how often you're remembering to take your medicine. It helps with communication between you and your doctor. So the reports are very easy to share with your doctor. All you have to do is plug a USB cable into your device, hook it up into your computer, and then um, a PDF will be downloaded to your computer and you can send your doctor an email with your results and your measurements. It's also extremely easy to use. So if you take a look at the Spiro PD at the top left there, you can see that there's two handles and that's so that you can use two hands and it helps you open up your chest cavity as you're expelling that air from your lungs. The handles are also very soft and squeezable, so that helps you to expel, squeeze really tightly and expel all that air from your lungs as well. There's a respiratory therapist that's literally built right into the device. And what I mean by that is there's an audible voice that coaches you through the entire test to ensure that you're doing it correctly. Also, there's these little blue LED lights that are on the front of the device, which you'll be able to see as you're expelling the air from your lungs. The goal is to light all seven of them. Um, so that helps you to expel and, and know all of the air from your lungs and know that you're doing it to the best of your ability. So I'm going to leave you with a quote. This is a quote by Dr. Michael Blaze. 
She is the board of director of the World Allergy Organization and also a clinical professor, a professor of pediatrics and medicine at the University of Tennessee. He states that with the increased prevalence of emergency department visits and hospitalizations for asthma and other pulmonary problems in the United States, Spiro PD can empower patients to monitor their disease and catch problems before they lead to costly emergency treatment. So that concludes our webinar for today. Um, I want to thank you all very much for attending. If you have any questions, by all means, please enter them now in the Q&A box, and Nancy and Carrie Ann will be happy to answer them. Um, if you'd like to speak with somebody live, feel free to visit us at, um, or I'm sorry, call 188-PMD for you, or visit us at www.spiropd.com. That's our website for additional information. And we'll be conducting more webinars in the future, so we hope to see you again soon. All right, thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.